Uh, yes, uh, yeah, so welcome back. I think it's just uh, waiting to get recorded, but I think Christopher, I, I can see your hand up. Would you like to uh, raise your question, please? Yes, Christopher, you can raise your question. Uh, yes, I just wanted to uh, get some clarification on Matthew uh, 1244. I think we had just uh, referred to that uh, that verse um, where it mentions that um, uh, the evil spirit will say that he returns back to the house from which I came. Uh, and when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. So I just wanted to understand, uh, get some clarification on this empty, swept, and put in order. Because it seems that um, the person who has has had that spirit has um, has is is now is now okay, uh, but still the 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 devil is um, the or the evil spirit is able to come in. So uh, does it mean that the person hasn't um, hasn't uh, protected himself uh, enough? Um, is there anything else that is required? Uh, because um, uh, the person seems to have have uh, resolved the uh, resolved that you know uh, uh, that uh, entry uh, that earlier entry of of the um, evil spirit, and uh, probably uh, you know cast out that evil evil spirit. So just wanted to get some clarification on that. Yeah. So um, um, like we like we determined earlier that. Uh, the devil and the evil spirits are looking for ways to bring down all of God's creation. And that also means that he is looking for a place to bring about oppression towards even believers. So um, as this verse says, you know, like, like you rightly said, <clears throat> you, you definitely find that there has been deliverance that has taken place in this person's life because the home or the house or, or the person, there's, it's unoccupied, it is kept in order, it is kept well, it is swept up and it's decorated, all right? But that does not mean that all because it has happened that an evil spirit cannot gain entrance into a life again, into, into a believer's life again. So at every point of time, we need to stay guarded and vigilant for any possible open doors that may come about. So even though a house is swept order, there is possibilities of the enemy gaining entrance in again. And that's why we keep our minds constantly renewed, constantly sanctified by the word of God and with the power of the Holy Spirit. So that's something that we need to do. And this is true of all of us that, um, uh, you know, that we need to continually <clears throat> cast, cast off or, you know, protect our inner person from the attack of the evil one. So that that's something that we all have to do. It's it's not that once, you know, we've stood in deliverance, there may be not a place where that the spirit, uh, another evil spirit, can enter it. And I think that will uh, you will have a little bit more clarity when we speak about um, possession and uh, uh, op uh, oppression. And we're going to be talking about that uh, a little more in detail uh, soon. So it, it there is a possibility that we can. That, that doors can be opened and the enemy can continue to oppress even believers. Thank you. Yeah, this, yeah okay. All right. So um, going back to what we were, uh, um, you know, what we, so we, we were talking about how the, uh, the evil spirits um, can, can operate in groups and that, that, you know, when we bring freedom, they need to be set free from all, all, in, in a possible in, in a group okay so uh, in scripture we see that the word demons or unclean spirits or evil spirits are used synonymously okay they used one for the other and but they refer to the same thing they refer to all kinds of of beings that are from the devil okay so as we had determined the devil is the head of this um, of this kingdom 
and he's and all the other evil spirits or demons uh, unclean spirits are under his command and under his rule so we we need to look at how do evil spirits gain access and some of the things that we spoke about was the initial seven points that we we um, we had dealt with already but to but to just bring about highlight this once again it is that deep seated sin continual deep-seated sin that opens the door for the entrance of the evil spirit those corresponding spirits enter inside there can be moments of weakness um, that uh, that can bring about uh, an entrance of the of an evil spirit like uh, you know you did we we do see um, an example of that in in King David's David, right? Where uh, that was a moment of success for him. And I and I remember in in our last. Uh, in the course on marriage, for those of you who had attended, we had spoken about this, about adultery, of how to be careful during during moments of weak, success and moments of weakness, because that again opens the door for the enemy to, to bring about an entrance in. So those moments of weakness where they enter without permission, maybe, you know, points of time when someone is very low, uh, emotionally feeling very low, enter into... Uh, some form of a, either, uh, you know, maybe a negative thought or maybe some kind of a, um, unacceptable behavior. Um, and that becomes like a hold for the, for the, for the spirit to walk in. I've, I've heard of so many uh, examples of, you know, um, people going through significant losses, uh, start hoping to cope with some kind of a substance, either through drugs or through alcohol or through uh, smoking, and that becomes like a stronghold there, and that continues to stay on, and they find it extremely hard to break off from, you know, in just those moments of weakness, uh, you know, entrance into something that is uh, that that is not holy can create this again this access, certain dedications and consecrations uh, that are made. Um, to to the evil world or or to anything other than god can again gain access and of course the occult those false religions witchcraft sorcery divination spells all of that uh, is an active place of where the evil spirits do gain access okay now uh, it's important for us to understand these two these words of possession and oppression so when we look at the word um, possession. Uh, it, it refers to uh, possession is where you take complete control of. It's it's like you know you you um, you you know when you're going to go buy a house, they will say you have full possession of it uh, in in the first installment of it. What does it mean that it is all yours? It's full and complete ownership of it. It's a complete control that you have. So if a person is demon possessed, what we mean to say is that the demon has taken complete control and ownership of the individual okay and we see some of the examples uh, in scripture and uh, we will look at one or two examples here the the verses are written here would someone open to mark chapter 5 verses 1 to 5 and we could read that out this is uh, this is specifically relating to the person who was possessed demon possessed in the uh, in the country of gadarenes right would someone kindly um, Take up that, that scripture and read it. Mark 5, 1 to 5. And uh, the next person, someone else could just keep Acts 16, 16 to 18 also opened. Uh, after this, we could have one of you read that. So Mark 5, 1 to 5. Um, would someone like to read it? Uh, Sissy, Sissy Thomas, we've never heard your voice. It'd be great if you could take up the Acts uh, verse and uh, somebody else who we haven't heard. Simran, Simran, would you like to read Mark 5, 1 to 5? Wait, ma'am. Yes, Simran. 
Would you like to read? Okay, uh, I think someone else had opened up. If if you all have, please please kindly do so. Mark five one two five. Can I read? Yes, please please go ahead, Shrikumar. Go ahead. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Sorry. Yes, Simran, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Mark 5, 1 to 5. They came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes, and when Jesus had stepped out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit. He lived among the tombs, and no one could bind him any more, not even with a chain, for he had often been bound with shackles and chains, but he wrenched the chains apart, and he broke the shackles in pieces. No one had the strength to subdue him night and day among the tombs and on the mountains. He was always crying out and cutting himself with stone. Thank you. Thank you, Simran. Yeah, so as, as we see in the scripture, uh, it, it's, uh, it's quite clear that mm -hmm. this person, when you look at him and his surroundings and where he was, that he made his dwelling among tombs. Um, he was, nobody could bind him, not even with chains. He was, he had often been bound, but then there he had so much of power that he could uh, uh, pull apart those shackles. So uh, it just appears that no one even went near him. Okay, night and day he would cut himself, crying out. So appears like, like someone who has been completely taken over by, uh, by demonic influences. Okay, so the meaning of possession is to be taken over. Or let's look at another example, the servant girl. Um, at Philippi, uh, Shri Kumar, uh, Shri Kumar, oh, yes, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And Acts 16, 16 to 18, and it happened that as we were going to the place of prayer, a certain slave girl, having a spirit of divination met us, was bringing her master much profit by fortune telling. Following after Paul and us, she kept crying out saying, these men are born servants of the Most High, who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. And she continued doing this for many days. But Paul was greatly annoyed and turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out at that very moment. Thank you, Sissy. Thank you so much. All right. So, so we see here that even this is again another example of a girl who's been completely controlled by the evil spirit, not even having any, um, you know, understanding rational of her own that she could, she could move out of being used by her masters for this fortune telling. And Paul recognizes this and casts her out in uh, cast casts his a person out. So something we need to understand is that a born again believer in Jesus Christ cannot be demon possessed because in us there is the it is the place of the Holy Spirit. So we cannot be completely controlled or possessed or taken over by by uh, by a demon. Okay. However, oppression is something that can take place in a believer. So what does oppression mean? Oppression is a wrongful entrance or a, a wrongful enforcing of a demonic power <laughs> into your life. So they trespass onto some area of your life or onto your body, probably because of the entrance that it has been given. So this demonic oppression is where they exert their their influence in a person's life and tormenting one or probably more areas of their lives. It could be either their physical area, their mental area, their emotional, the, the places of their situation. So generally, a lot of 
the, the, the places that are not being oppressed goes on normally, except maybe those one those places where there's one or more demons that are active in the life of that person. Okay, so oppression is something that can be seen uh, that that you know even as a believer that we can uh, we we can we can be under. So we see this in um, you know in Jesus's ministry that a lot of people who came to him for healing had demons cast out of them in order to be healed. So whether they were possessed or whether they were oppressed, the the uh, the in either of the cases, it is that these need to be cast out. Okay, so when we look at uh, Matthew chapter 18, verses 16 to 17, I'll read that out. <clears throat> it says, When evening <clears throat> had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness. So all those who came to Jesus for deliverance, all that we see that's been uh, recorded, were oppressed by evil spirits, maybe not completely possessed, okay, uh, as, as we do see it as, as a complete possession. And we see that uh, there are a lot of examples we see, right, of, of, um, uh, of uh, individuals who've been blind, who've been mute, who've been deaf, uh, who've had other conditions that, that have had, that's been there due to the evil spirits. Now, either cases, like we said, these need to be cast out. They need to be commanded to leave. And as a believer, as a, uh, as a blood-washed believer, you and I have been given that authority to cast out. Okay, And uh, that's something as part of our ministry we are called to do. You know, just like we may be teaching, we may be preaching, we may be encouraging, we may be... Um, uh, 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 um, uh, you know, the, working in, in administration, whatever we've been given, healing and deliverance is also part of our ministry. And so that's what we are called to do, to, to cast out, whether it is a possession or whether it is an oppression, we are called to cast out. Now, as sometimes, you know, the, the way that um, evil spirits do manifest can be seen differently so so sometimes as you're casting out there isn't much of a drama that that may follow okay like you know the person may not fall down or start to um, uh, start to have a seizure or be violent or scream or none of that sometimes the demons just leave very quietly when they are cast out but there may be times when uh, they can manifest out very openly externally, and sometimes these these manifestations, you 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 can you can see that. I I remember once while you know I was observing somebody who was praying for someone who had uh, who was oppressed by some by a spirit, and as pastor was praying, I could see her hands and her legs, you know, actually. Uh, trembling and it was not these normal trembles but they were like uh, really significant trembles and so these these do these manifestations generally do occur because the the demons are or the evil spirits are protesting and they don't want to let go of the place that they have occupied easily okay and the truth is that they do not want to be cast out and they resist uh, that being cast out. So they do put up that that front, that that resistance and they could be they they may refuse or they may be just be stubborn. Um, I, I've, I've heard a friend of mine you, uh, told me about her experience as you know, as she was casting out, this demon was getting into a conversation saying, I will not get out. Whatever you try and do, I will not get out. You know, so they, they could create a lot of resistance and uh, um, uh, you know push you to the limits but we see that you know we continue to persist <clears throat> using the name of Jesus and the blood of the lamp and uh, it will go it it has to go it it is not a place that it can stay so we take that authority and even in scripture you you looked look at you know the manifestations we see it in different places where uh, and and I think some of that scripture is written for you on that uh, 
on your notes. Like Mark 1, 26, it says, The unclean spirit convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice. Or Luke 4, 4, 41 says, Demons came out of many crying and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. You know, they were declaring uh, that, that uh, who Jesus was. Our Acts 8, 7 says, Unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. So, you may see, excuse me, you may see these manifestations and uh, yet, you know, we are called to walk in authority. So as, so from understanding these two words, we understand that as a born again believer, we cannot be possessed and a born again, spirit-filled believer, of course, can be in a place of oppression. So we can have evil spirits in us, affecting us, troubling us, tormenting us through different, maybe in places of our souls, in places of our uh, situations or in places of our, of our body. And we, uh, we need to take that authority to cast out these, uh, these evil spirits. Okay. Uh, I think there was a question. Okay, so Charles said, uh, when dealing with such spirits, I don't accept their conversation. So it, it's best not to, you know, get into um, talks with them, but just stay on point, stay on focus and cast them out, you know, through the blood of Jesus, command them to leave, command them to go. Um, maybe initially... Um, you can understand maybe probably some things or just some questions, maybe what their names are or, um, you know, uh, uh, who are there with them, just that much, you know, just for us to call out by name if, if you have not uh, been able to determine that, just those things to understand that and, you know, don't get into conversations if they do actually ask you questions and ask you certain details. There is no need to get into all of that because that's that's an attempt to sidetrack you away from actually doing your job of uh, casting out those, uh, uh, them from their lives because that's what they do. They, you know, they, they just deceive and lie and maybe even attack they could be attacking you as a, as a believer in some some way, you know, at your place of weakness and where you may just want to back off. But remember, you're there with the power of uh, the Lamb and your power um, of, of the Word that you're there. All right. Uh, any questions here or can I move on? Okay, I think I'll move on. Right. So some things that we uh, you know for us to uh, understand a couple of what could be some symptoms of uh, of how demons express themselves the 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 understanding is that satan and the demons prefer everything that is unexposed and uncovered they don't like to be in the open they don't like to be out there okay so so they like to stay uh, unexposed uh, where where uh, so so if there are attempts to expose them uh, you know that's why they they do actually um, resist so they don't like to be exposed so when you expose them they need to be sent out and that's when you know you're looking for wholeness and and uh, deliverance from the person uh, Again, they are not someone who you should be like. Like Charles said, where you're engaging in, okay, or you're preaching or teaching uh, the truth and exposing them. What they what they hate they mo hate the most is when you stand in the authority of Jesus and walk in that authority. That's when they shudder. Okay, so when Jesus has given us the authority to cast out, that's what they hate the most, that you are going to use your power and your authority, what has been given out to you to cast them out. So they will be very, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, if content to know that you know when we've spoken understood a lot of things about it but don't have a have a, a method or a tool um i'm sorry i'm using that word method or tool it's not that it's 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 something that you know you can blindly use but but that's what uh, that's what casts them out when we have the presence and the authority of god and the blood of the lamb and um uh, that's what brings them out so just for them to for us to recognize that uh, that that evil spirits uh, 
like the darkness, okay? But as children of God, we are called to expose that. So because it's only but when we are the light of Christ, God is light and his light is within us. And when we are called to expose that is when, uh, you know, they, they will be cast out. So to understand some symptoms of what, what can you notice? What are some things that you can, um, uh, you know, like just when you have COVID, there are certain symptoms and that's how you know that you have COVID, right? So similarly, how do you know that one, one, become, one is uh, oppressed or, or possessed? So the, the fact of there seems to be a strong sense of um, op uh, oppression that takes place. That is as if someone is overpowering you, someone is bearing over you. And no matter what you do, if you've looked up those, you know, initial steps, those six, seven steps we've looked at and um, repented for it, consecrated yourself, renewed your mind, and still none of that uh, seems to be working. And you, you just feel a sense of heaviness, a sense of torment um, uh, that, that seems very disturbing to you. You know, uh, I've, I've heard reports of people saying that, you know, I just have disturbed sleep in the night. I'm not, I don't feel a sense of peace. It's always there. No matter what I do, I can just feel that this, this sense of uh, restlessness and agitation that keeps coming and just a sense of troubling that's there or uh, or being controlling and as if something is controlling over you um, and keeping you enslaved in that. Um, I've heard of people who've gone through depression despite many, uh, you know, um, natural methods of medication or, uh, you know, uh, of, of getting counsel, of uh, getting spiritual help, pastoral help, yet feel this, there is this black, uh, black cloud. A lot of them uh, describe it like that, a black cloud that is over them, kind of controlling them and keeping over them as if they are bonded, enslaved in, in, in something. Okay, even uh, uh, a sense of um, doing something against your will, right? And I, I've heard a lot of people speak about, uh, especially for those who, who are suicidal, they say, you know, I'm scared to stay alone because I sometimes hear this uh, boys telling me to go do it, you know, go take that knife and cut yourself, go take, um, uh, you know, just go to the edge of the parapet and, and, and jump down. So these are all, uh, it, it's not, it's not you, but do you find that there is something else that's, that's driving in um, uh, to do that? Or whenever being engaged in things <clears throat> that are spiritual in nature, maybe prayer or the word of God or fasting, not able to uh, sit in peace through that, but but a general sense of uh, a stirring up that happens, or there could be other other reasons which uh, you know which maybe we haven't explained here, but there is some kind of an un unrecognizable source of a problem. You're able to look back and say, I don't know what this is. I don't know why I'm feeling like this or why this is happening. I'm not able to patch on to something. So this is are some, again, some of the symptoms that, that we, uh, you know, that we can recognize and understand where there seems to be a possible oppression or uh, possession. Okay. Now, uh, lastly, we're just going to look at what are some of the things that we've got to be careful uh, to avoid and, and uh, keeping some considerations in mind um, as we minister to people when we, <clears throat> when we, um, are focusing on um, you know, evil spirits causing emotional problems. So the first and foremost thing is being careful not to uh, relate every problem that uh, may that you may be seeing uh, because uh, not relating it to evil spirits, not giving that as the, as the only cause. Like like maybe when someone who has you know had an accident and uh, saying that uh, you know probably 
you know it's an it's an evil spirit probably the accident occurred because uh, you know you, you were you were on the wrong side of the road and you should have been on the right side of the road you could have avoided that accident right or an emotional experience maybe it's a, it's a place where you haven't taken that time to recognize that it's important to renew your mind and uh, it may not be a direct relation to the to an to an evil spirit or even something that may be situational maybe you lost your job and um, probably you know there is a there is a relation that's made that it is as a result of the evil spirit so we are called to be aware but also called to be wise and discerning of uh, understanding whether uh, what could some of this some of uh, uh, the contributions be so there can be other reasons and we need to ensure that that we take responsibility for for things that is in our that god has given unto us to be able to um, ensure like 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 i said you know uh, if if it's a wrong thought or if it's a if if you are in a wrong situation if you are in a if you are doing something that you're not that you are responsible for taking that responsibility but it just helps us to build our awareness that that causes can also be demonic in nature okay um again we need to be clear that we don't avoid this this part of ministry that you know we don't um, um whether whether we believe it or not it is there right there is the power of god and there is power of the demonic so we must not avoid doing this you know maybe because we we feel we are inadequate or we don't know how or uh, any of that and we're going to be talking about some of this about how do we help in deliverance how do we help in um a wholeness but the the you know the best um uh, the best thing that we have or the best person that we have alongside with us is the holy spirit that helps us to recognize and helps us to help cast this out so if ever you kind of sense it you know um ask immediately get into a communication with the holy spirit to help you to understand how to deal and how to bring about deliverance, deliverance okay also we also should avoid giving too much of attention or making big or making boastful what the devil and his demons do our focus is on god our focus is on on the lord uh, lord's glory and and uh, sovereignty over everything okay even even with even over the forces of darkness and we keep we keep our attention and focus on god not our attention and focus on the on on the devil and his demons it's it's like something that you have noticed and you know you cast away and, and that's done it doesn't take that importance for you also while in ministry while you while there is deliverance and while there's wholeness taking place um being careful not to bring a lot of attention to yourself when you are ministering deliverance um, we all of us have believe all of us as believers every each one of us has been given the authority by god to cast out evil spirits so when we are doing it we are do we are we are doing something naturally that we are all called to do it's not a special calling but it's something as part of the ministry that that we are called to do so being careful that we don't get boastful about it or get too proud about the fact that um we are able to uh, uh, remember that it's only by the grace the mercy and the blood of the lord that we we can do anything apart from that we are nothing okay so uh, jesus spoke about this you know when you look at uh, luke 10 17 to 20 uh, and i'll read that out it's there in your uh, books i'm just going to read that out then the 70 returned with the disciples uh, it's talking about those disciples they returned with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to us in your name and he said to them i saw satan fall like lightning from heaven Behold I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you nevertheless okay however do not rejoice in this that the spirits are subject to you but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven so what it means to say is 
it isn't don't consider that you've done a big thing it is it is what you are called to do and uh, a best thing i think especially when we are working in ministry or any form of deliverance and wholeness um what is recommended is working in a team and making this more uh, a, a together effort so that it isn't um you know that one person is in highlighted for the uh, for for what has happened okay Uh, a couple of other pointers that we need to be careful about is uh, being careful not to humiliate or look down upon someone who's manifested when they are experiencing deliverance um remember that all uh, you know as as it says each each of us requires a good spring cleaning right here here and now every once in a while and we when so we we are also in a place of needing to be cleansed so when we see people who are being who are experiencing deliverance um seeing them as individuals and as 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 how god would see them and they are just people who want who are who require or, or need that deliverance and someone who who requires to be uh um who requires to have that oppression cast out okay and uh, uh, so whenever we you have they have experienced um a deliverance we we go back and rejoice and praise god and uh, you know um be joyful about bringing them back to it even though uh, the the process sometimes can be very difficult or it can be uh, it can be quite long lasting and and you know maybe very um, uh, tiring as well we respect and love the person and and not the manifestations of that okay um again certain other pointers is being careful not to to move away this deliverance ministry as something that's secondary of secondary importance like we said you know the the gospel as part of of preaching the gospel is healing and deliverance healing of mind body soul um it is all part of ministry and and that's what jesus asked us to do you know uh to bring in all kinds of signs and wonders and healing and deliverance and miracles and that's what jesus did in his ministry everything takes the similar uh, importance okay and uh, um uh, remember again the last last part of it is not to discard the deliverance ministry because some may not believe it or some may not understand it like we said you know even if uh, uh If people don't believe it or or make fun of it or uh, yeah, or they they do things to abuse it still god has called each one of us and called his people to bring about uh, uh to bring about people from their captivity to deliver them from their captivity so we see it as part of the ministry we don't throw it aside because you know it's a scary thing or it's going to move away people that's what that there there are times that people definitely do require um uh, wholeness and deliverance as a result of being oppressed by the evil spirit okay all right so um we end this chapter <clears throat> on um, the causes of the problems uh, of the soul we looked at the initial problems and then today's was our, our specific focus one was on evil spirits from next week on we will be starting on our uh, our deliverance and our healing and what is the what is the basis what are some of the basis for this what is it that we can hold on to some of the tenets of healing and deliverance you know we understand that before we get into the methods of how to uh, go about it all right is there um any question any any thoughts that you would like to bring about um as we close this chapter <clears throat> have a very quiet class either all of you all are ministering right now in some place mam there's so many questions that we're trying to figure out which one to start with <laughs> okay yeah okay so uh, there's one uh, there's one uh, situation right now i'm into it 
one of my mm -hmm. friend's son is constantly threatening to end his life. And uh, mm. both the parents are COVID positive. They are from the mainline church. The uh, mother believes there ne is a need of deliverance and uh, this is something happening. But the father is, uh, you know, in living in complete denial and he's uh, mm. thinking that medicines can help, doctors can help and, you know, not accepting the fact that, uh, and that the son is like, uh, 36 years old so he's not even uh, very young or something so uh -huh. mother is continuously praying despite all the threats God has been kind he saved the son from uh, uh -huh. any devastating step uh, uh -huh. we are continually praying but uh, what next to do is uh, something like how to minister to that child himself uh, becomes an issue because uh, the father is not allowing anyone to come and talk neither they are seeking for help from outside and uh, it is a very very uh, critical state uh, but mm -hmm. just resorting to prayer and believing that god will bring somebody in to help mm -hmm. so ma'am would you like to help my, just advise something in this situation yeah, yeah. so um Let's look at this in different levels, okay? Now, someone, a young man who's threatening suicide, um, like like I said, you know, we have to be careful not to make make it all relational to only the demonic or the evil spirit. There could be something that is of the natural that we need to. Uh, ensure and take care of. So let's look at it in different levels. I'm not looking at it like a priority, but I'm just saying uh, let's look at it holistically. For those of you who are in my counseling class, you remember we looked yesterday at the five areas of functioning, remember? Yeah, so that's what we, when, when we are helping people come into wholeness or deliverance, we are also looking at those different areas. So number one is, is there, to start with the most basic, that is our body, is there something physically contributing to the way that this young man feels? So is there something like maybe clinical depression that is that seems to be significant there? Okay, are there any physical conditions that may be um, uh, causing this sense of a depression. Now, if you want to deal with that, the first thing you need to do is get medical help. To get psychiatric help is, is needed, okay? <clears throat> Going on to a next level of the emotional uh, being of the person. There's definitely a lot of, em just hearing the case, I can understand that there is a lot of emotional overwhelm that's happening there. He's unable to manage emotions, so, the coping has become, if you don't give me what I need or if you don't do this, then I'm going to jump off, okay? If you don't satisfy what I want the most or what I desire the most or how I'm feeling, this is what I want. So definitely there is an emotional component to it that, of course, needs to be dealt with through wholeness and through um, maybe through a sense of counseling and all of that. Looking at their rational being, uh, at this point of time, he has lost his understanding of what are the right things to do. You know, you know. I I, I suppose that I'm here. I'm making certain um, um, certain guesses. Maybe he's not in a good good he's not at work or he's not in a meaningful job or doesn't have a relationship has has nothing to look forward to he's probably wasted his life and you know come to a place of thinking everything is gone so just that rational experience of understanding what his purpose is what he should do next how should he attempt on his side to get better all of that seems to be lost right then is the volitional part or the the place where you are uh, where, where you are making decisions, unable to make decisions, make the right choices, feels that it's only uh, threats or 
I think it's more threats, you know, getting the parents under that under his control. And of course, now spiritual. Spiritual, yes, we spoke about those three crucial needs. I'm I'm pretty sure that there are all of them that's missing, but there could also be the presence of the evil spirit there. Now the, the door has been opened. You know, we spoke about legions. There has probably been an initial door that's been opened, and now it's come to a place that there is an oppression, that every time this is um this seems to be a cop out. So how do we help to deal with it is looking at it very simply through two ways. What are we called to do maybe in the natural to help this young man? One may be to get him, get him medical psychiatric help, to get him into uh, some place of counseling, to have, have a, maybe a spiritual mentor just to walk him through um, basics of faith and uh, just to support him, you know, through that. And so that's the first, I'd say the first level, okay? And despite all your efforts in the natural, you're not seeing anything but continues to be as um, troubling and as distressing, you know, then work on this, uh, you know, getting getting him into um, help for deliverance. So I would see this as hand in hand, that we've got to be careful, especially in cases like this, that, that so if you had told me, Abni, that, that this boy is under treatment and he's under counseling, he's getting all whatever it needs, but still, then I'd say, you know, this is definitely something to do with, with the evil spirits. But from what I do understand, there is no help given at all. He seems to be in the home and there seems to be a big struggle which the enemy has used between the father and mother to decide whether it's natural or whether it's spiritual. And there in itself, there is no help that's given, you know, and, and this is just getting deeper and deeper. So if if I, we were to logically look at it and help in some some sense of structure, I'd say, naturally give him every help that he needs for for his um, to to handle this this emotional difficulty that he's going through probably there's depression probably there's some other form of uh, illness or disorder that's there there may be heightened sense of anxiety um, or there may be other related issues maybe there may be substance use we, we don't know there may be so many things that are you know mixing the problem and dealing with whatever you have in the natural to work with it and then uh, even if nothing works out then ensuring that you know he can't goes to a place for deliverance uh, in that and i think that also probably helps the family understand the course of action too you know working at it one by one so that there is there is you know they can also see what can be certain contributing factors yeah i hope i and i i dealt with that abni Yes, ma'am. Uh, just to share, medical help has been given. The doctors have prescribed okay. medicine. So last time, uh, because of the medicines, he was sleeping too much. He was not able to eat well and all. So mm -hmm. they reduced the medicines. He goes to work uh, in between. Mm -hmm. When he goes to work, he is pretty fine. But then mm -hmm. when the uh, when this, uh, this depression comes back again, he loses interest in work and then he just isolates mm. himself and then he's not able to perform so then the pressure comes and then there is a chances of losing job or sometimes he's even lost job so mm. um, and then there is a history of suicide in the family ma'am that i oh. forgot to mention mm. okay so there is a history of uh, that also mm -hmm. so keeping all that in mind uh, mm. we are trying to uh, find out the solution so i think Avni, one good thing to do is put him in touch with somebody who can okay. who is cognizant of all of this not just either the uh, you know the natural part of it or just the spiritual but someone who can see this holistically you know and that would be uh, so someone who can help to guide this family rather than uh, them getting to do this on their own because there seems to be even trouble and consensus of decisions here, right? So if you can get them in touch with with uh, uh, with either a, a pastor or a counselor who, who can work through this uh, little by little sensitively and and carefully with them, uh, I, I see I see some kind of help that's that would be there. Sure, ma'am. Thank you so much. I will I will. Sure. Okay. 
if there aren't any other questions, um, maybe we can just close with a word of prayer. Um, could I request somebody to pray? Mm. Who'd like to pray today? I don't like calling out names. I feel it should be voluntary. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll pray. Yes, Harrison, please go ahead. Thank you. Our Father and our God, Lord, thank you. I want to bless your name because you're a great God. I want to thank you because even when we failed you, you were very remained faithful to your word. We thank you for the words we've heard. We thank you for the for the grace and the ability you have given unto us, you know, to cast out demons. And Father, we thank you, God, for the awareness. God, we thank you for the for the eye opening. We thank you for the word of knowledge that you have made us to understand today. And we're standing on this foundation of truth, you know, to know that we can cast out, you know, demons. And by your grace, we can live above you know, any form of demons. We thank you, God, for a lecture that you're using, God, to impact this knowledge. That we pray that you will continually, oh God, keep our God in, in, your, in your wings, in your presence. The Father, oh God Almighty, she will not depart from your presence. And I thank you, God, for my fellow students, God, that you will give us the grace to abide, God, by your word, to abide in your presence always. And we thank you for our sister who shared in you know, some few things. And we pray that there will be perfection in the health of our brother. Holy Spirit, you that know the best in this situation, you, can, you that can see what we cannot see, Go and do that which we cannot do in the life of our brother, that he will receive his perfect healing and come back in right senses in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, God, for this day. And we pray that when next we meet, oh God, again, we will have every cause to glorify your name and we'll have a testimony to share. In Jesus' much less name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Harrison. Thank you all. Have a blessed Thank week.